بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام تجويد the art of reciting the Quran As we mentioned earlier, our methodology in this series is to start off our show with an interesting fact about the Qur'an so that our love and our knowledge of the Qur'an grows along with our knowledge of the rules of recitation. Today, we're going to discuss how the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. We know that Allah inspires His Prophets directly and He also speaks with them directly. And this also the Prophet ﷺ heard Allah when He went to Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, the journey of the heavens. However, the Quran was not revealed in this manner. The Quran was revealed through the medium of the angel Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah refers to this in the Quran when he says, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Verily, this is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ It has been brought down by the Holy Spirit. Ruhul الْأَمِينَ which is the spirit of Jibreel. عَلَى قَلْبِكَ To your heart. لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ So that you may be amongst the warners or the prophets. So the Prophet ﷺ received the Quran from Jibreel. Now how did he do this? Aisha radiallahu anha asked him directly. Aisha, his beloved wife. She said, O Messenger of Allah, how does the inspiration come to you? So the Prophet ﷺ explained that it comes in two different fashions, two different manners. He said, sometimes, sometimes I hear it like the ringing of a bell. And this is difficult for me. So in other words, it's like a trance-like state. He hears something. And he knows it is inspiration, but he doesn't see anything. And it is difficult for him, this state. But he goes, after this is over, I memorize and hear or, or remember what was said to me. And he said, sometimes, the second type, Jibreel comes to me in the form of a man. So this, in this uh, fashion or in this manner, Jibreel comes to me in the form of a man. So I see him and I know he is Jibreel. And he then communicates to me the inspiration and this is easier for me. Okay? And we know that the process of inspiration was a very difficult one in general. It is authentically narrated that the Prophet ﷺ would sweat on a cold day while he was being inspired. He would sweat because of the heaviness of the inspiration. Also it is narrated that once the Prophet ﷺ was on his camel, an inspiration came to him. It was so heavy, the inspiration, physical weight, that the camel itself had to sit down. It could not bear the weight of the inspiration. Imagine upon our Prophet Muhammad and how it must have been. And Allah refers to this in the Quran. In a very early revelation, one of the first revelations revealed to the Prophet Allah reminds him that this will not be an easy task. It will not be an easy job to be a Prophet and to take the inspiration. Rather, it is a very difficult task. And of the responsibilities is that the inspiration must be taken even though it is a difficult task to do. Allah reminds him, إِنَّا سَنُلْقِ عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا We will of a surety put upon you a heavy weight, a heavy burden. The heavy weight meaning the weight of the recitation, the weight of the inspiration. So the Prophet ﷺ was reminded of this in a very early revelation so that he could better prepare himself physically, mentally and spiritually to be a Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our last episode we had discussed the letters that are heavy and the letters that are light. Tafkhim and Tarqiq. And we said that there are seven letters that are always heavy. What are these seven letters? <laughs> these are also the letters of? Isti'la. Okay. There are two letters that are sometimes heavy and sometimes light. The first of these letters is? Lam. And we discussed the rules of Lam in our previous episode. We now move on to the Ra. Sometimes the Ra will be heavy and sometimes it will be light. Now, the, the rules of the Ra are a little bit complicated, so just be patient and bear with me, but don't get frustrated. These are simple rules, they're mechanical rules. You memorize them and then you implement them. There's no tricks to it. Okay? So we'll take it one by one. When, are the, when will the Ra be heavy and when will the Ra be light? Therefore, we'll draw up a chart. Well, the first chart we'll have on the right-hand side, Tafkhim. Okay, when will the Ra' be heavy? This is Tafkhim. And on the left hand side we'll have, uh, or sorry, the other way, on the left hand side will be Tafkhim and the right hand side will be Tarqiq. So we'll have two charts here, two columns here. In one of the columns we'll place all of the circumstances when the Ra' will be heavy. And in the other column we'll place the circumstances in which the Ra' will be light. The first rule is that any time there is a Fatha on the Ra' it will be heavy. Okay, Rasul. Any time there is a fatha on the ra itself, it must be heavy. No exceptions in the entire Qur'an. 
Similarly, if there is a dhamma on the ra, rusul, ra, ru, it's heavy. Okay? So anytime there is a dhamma, once again, the entire Quran, no exceptions. Suppose the ra is silent. In this case, we look at the letter before it. Once again, if there is a fatha or dhamma, the ra will be heavy. So you can derive a general rule that in general the fatha and the dhamma implies heaviness, tafkhim. So if the ra has a fatha or dhamma on it, it will be heavy. But even if it is silent, but before it there is a fatha or dhamma, for example, ar sala li nur sila. Notice now the ar sala, the ra is silent, but before it is a fatha. Likewise, li nur sila, the ra is silent, but before it is a Dhamma. Once again, the ra will be heavy. So all of these examples are no exceptions in the entire Quran. Simple rule, memorize it and apply it. Rasul, Rusul, Ar Salah, Li Nur Sila. All of the ra's are heavy. When will the ra be light? Well, obviously, who can guess what the first one will be? Kasra. Kasra, obviously, because we have a fatha dhamma here. So obviously, when there is a kasra, the ra will be light. Okay. An example is. Risala, Risala. Now compare between Rasul and Risala. Ra, Ri, Ra, Ri. Likewise, compare between Rusul and Risala. Ru, Ri, Ru, Ri. You can tell the difference that there is a heaviness in the Rasul and the Rusul, whereas the Ri will be light. Risala. Okay. So the general rule is that a Fatha or a Dhamma will imply heaviness. And a kasra will imply light. Okay. There, so far, there are no exceptions. So far, all of these are complete in the entire Quran. So I'm sure everyone thinks, well, how, what is so difficult about this topic? Now we get to the exceptions, or now we get to uh, things which will be a bit more difficult. Uh, but inshallah, today's episode, we don't want to, you know, uh, get you too confused. We'll stop at this point here, and that is that uh, if the ra is silent, but there is a kasra before it. It will be light. This is the general rule. There are exceptions. And those exceptions will not be discussed today. They'll be discussed in the future episode. We just want you to uh, memorize this chart so far. An example is Fiz'aun. Fiz'aun. Notice how light the ra is. Compare this to Ar-Sala. Ar-Sala. Notice how heavy the ra is. Fiz'daus. Fiz'daus. It's light. Over here, Linur-Sila. Linur sila, heavy. Okay, so this is a very simple chart. So far, it's nothing complicated. The exceptions and the more difficult things will come in the next episode. But in order to calm you down, these simple rules here, perhaps 90 or 95 percent of the Quran will be applicable here. It's very easy. The general rule is that a fatha or a dhamma implies heaviness, and a kasra implies lightness. Whether the fatha and dhamma is on the ra or it is before it and the ra is silent, and if the kasra is before it. Uh, is on it or before it so far the only exceptions which we'll discuss tomorrow is in this particular case when the ra is silent but before it is a kasra the general rule is that it will be light occasionally sometimes this is, does not apply and we'll discuss that uh, next time so ponder over these rules because now we're going to apply them memorize them and then I want you all to turn to Surah Al-Qamar and we are going to now apply these rules Practically, this is the theory. Now let us apply it, and we've chosen Surah Al-Qamar because, inshallah, you will find all of these rules being applied. Okay, Surah Al-Qamar is Surah number 54 in the Quran. Okay, repeat after me. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Okay, in the شيطان الرجيم, there's a ra. Is it heavy or light? Who can tell me? Heavy, light. You say light. Why do you say light? It's heavy. I'll tell you why you said light because you thought there was a kasra before it. Nil rajim. But remember, this is very important. Look at the kasra. Only when it is silent will the ra be heavy. If the ra has a letter or a vowel sign on it, a fatha kasra dhamma, you don't look at the letter before it. Notice the fatha on the ra will be heavy. The dhamma on the ra will be heavy. Okay, likewise the kasra on the ra will be light. 
No exceptions in the entire Quran. Any time the Ra has a particular uh, vowel sign on it, you can immediately tell the rule. You don't look at the letter before it. So, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Even though the Ra has a kasra before it, الرجيم, you don't care about it because the Ra itself has a fatha on it. Okay? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر Okay, apply the rules. اقترب, the ra, how will it be? Heavy, yeah. because because uh, the letter here is uh, it has a it has it has a, it vowel, has a vowel, vowel on it sign. and the vowel sign is the fatha so it will be heavy. When shaq al qamar, al qamar here is uh, also heavy because it's uh, that's a code because it ends uh, finally in in a word and before it has a fatha. Okay, here it is important that you look at the ra and it has a dhamma on it. Okay, mm -hmm. but the rule doesn't apply now because we stopped. When we stop, you take the Dhamma out and you put a Sukun. Hmm. So you don't apply the rule of the, uh, of the Dhamma. You look at the Sukun and then you see the letter before it. Notice here on our thing, it is silent then, but the letter before it is what? A meme with a Fatha. So it will take this rule. Silent but a Fatha before it. Okay? وَنْشَقَّ qamar, Heavy. وَإِنْ يَرَوْا آيَةً يُعْرِضُوا وَيَقُولُوا سِحْرٌ مُسْتَمِرْ Okay, يَرَوْ What is يَرَوْ? تَفْخِيمَ تَفْخِيمَ Because the Ra has a Fatha يُعْرِضُوا Tarqiq because the Ra has a Kasra. So notice, وَإِن يَرَوْا آيَةً يُعْرِضُوا وَيَقُولُوا سِحْرٌ مُسْتَمِذٌ سِحْرٌ How about سِحْر? It's heavy because it has a Dhamma or two Dhammas, the same as a Dhamma. مُسْتَمِذٌ Tarqiq, important. Look, when you look at the Ra, you think that it might be heavy because the Ra has a Dhamma. But you don't look at the Dhamma, we stopped here. No, Had we moved on, then you look at the Dhamma. No. If we say, Sihrun wa We moved on. Mustamirru, it becomes heavy. Yeah. But we stopped. So we placed a sukun on it, then we look at the letter before it. In which case, we find clearly over here, when it is silent, but a kasra before it, then generally, and we'll accept, call the exceptions in the next lesson, but generally, it will be light. Okay? وَكَذَّبُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا أَهْوَاءَهُمْ وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ مُسْتَقِرٍ Okay, أَمْرٍ clearly light because of the kasra. Mustaqir, once again, the ra has a sukun and there is a kasra before it. So it will be light. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَنْبَاءِ مَا فِيهِ مُزْدَجَرْ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَنْبَاءِ once again, Muzdajar, uh, the Ra is silent before it is a Fatha, so it will be heavy. Hikmatum baligatum famatunin nuzur. Hikmatum baligatum famatunin Okay, so we have now once again the Ra is heavy, is heavy, heavy is because heavy. it's silent and before it is a Dhamma. So uh, this is a very easy chart, nothing complicated, so far so good. And as I said, perhaps 90 or 95 percent of the Ra's you will be able to get the ruling from this simple thing. Is that the general rule is Fatha and Dhamma implies heaviness and Kasra implies Lightness. The only exception from this chart will be discussed in the next episode and that is that sometimes 
uh, when there is a silent but a kasra before it is not heavy. Uh, but generally, uh, it is not light, excuse me, but generally it is light. And we have applied these rules in the beginning of Surah Al-Qamar. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's episode. Until next time, we hope to see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.